John again at the Hangar 37 and uh, we're going to do the assembly today of the uh, E-Flight Draco. Uh, if you watch my unboxing video you'll see that I was pretty upset about some of the things that came in the packaging and the way it was packaged. But I'll deal with that and if they replace the prop I'm okay. So let's get on with the assembly. As I last showed you on my unboxing is I did do the uh, the rear wheel and it, it's really really cool and uh, let's see if I can give you an idea here oh, look at that baby let's see if I there you go that's a nice shock on there I've never seen anything quite like it on any models and I've been in it for about 10 years now so uh, and I know that's not a lot but uh, I know there's you guys out there for 50 years so uh, I'm sure you're going to have some nice things to say about it, but anyway, <laughs> uh, excited to, to, to get going on this. I've watched a ton of videos on this, and it's really not a hard build at all, and compared to some of them I've done, and, uh, and we're just going to turn this upside down, and I am going to get the uh, landing gear going here. And there's four screws, and I'm going to be going to the manual on some of these just to make sure I use the right screws in that. Why would they show? Well, I'm going to show you. I don't know if you can see this or not, but here they show a B screw, three by ten millimeters, four, going into that gear ain't gonna happen so just be aware of that and it's there's a bag with four of the 30 millimeters and then there's a bag and these are actually three by eight I believe and I'm not sure exactly where those will be used but we'll find out but they're definitely not going to be used on the landing gear Okay, I have a little magnet here on my vise that I uh, remagnetized my tips so that uh, it'll hold the screws better. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Doesn't hold them that well. Oh, jeez. Thank you very much. Johnny, what you do? Time out! I'm gonna take a break here, find my screw. Okay, I'm back and I did get the four screws in here. I did not tighten them down yet though. That's a really, really nice setup here. And uh, you want to just, just double check and make sure everything lines up nice in it does. It fit in there like a glove. Really nice. And uh, then, okay, you get this little piece here, this little foam piece. And uh, they give you, it's got uh, two-sided tape on it. And what that is, is a piece that goes on right here. And that stays permanently, even if you have to take the wheels off, you can still get to the screws. So uh, it just fills that in a little bit. Uh, and then obviously they keep this open so you get airflow to keep the, e this is the ESC right here. And they just wanted to cover that uh, plate, but keep this open so you get airflow to keep that ESC cool. <laughs> All right. Now, <sighs> I don't know. There we go. Now there's screws here that actually uh, 
uh, attach the uh, wheel pants to the carbon plate. You might want to just give those a half turn or something. Mine were loose, so I, I tightened them up. Now, that actually took them away from the other piece, and there's a gap there, but I don't know there's much you can do about that. You can see there's a little gap here when you tighten down. But, it is what it is. I guess nothing is really perfect. Now, there's a piece here that goes in like so. And that is a step, and actually I think this is the one that goes on here. Oh, 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 oh. And that, that actually helps lock down this wheel pant, but I'm not gonna put those on yet, because they're just getting away and probably broken off. Okay, very nice. Okay, so I've got the wheels on. Now just, I'm going to give you a little note here. These are 5 inch foam wheels on there, Tundra wheels, but they're hard. Uh, I mean, they're, 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 they're pretty hard. I mean, they're, they're not, they're not going to help you as far as a Tundra tire, a tire would be. They're not going to help you like a real Tundra tire would. I have gotten a set of 5-inch uh, Dubros big wheels, which are spongy air tires, and they're exactly 5 inches like these, but they're wider and the hole is smaller. I actually drilled these out to get them on, but they're too wide and they're going to they're going to hit the uh, the housings for the uh, uh, the extensions for the uh, shaft, the, the, the wheel shaft and uh, shock. Now you could probably, and I may in the future, put a, a, a four or five millimeter bolt through here and with some spacers, and, and that's probably what I'm going to do in the future, but I'm not going to get rid of these just yet, so, but just be aware of it. If you try the Dubros, they're not going to fit as they come. You're going to have to modify the tire and the shaft. Okay. Ah, uh, for now they'll do. Yeah, I'm gonna put this up right here. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. All right. Oh. Now I believe this takes a 6S. They give you dual rates and that. Uh, I run a three stage dual rate on my DX9, which is, I'll be setting this up on my DX9. And uh, this is a bind and fly version. Better be. Well, we'll find out when I try and bind it. Okay, one of the other things I did want to mention, that's kind of cool, because this is a long, narrow nose. They give you it looks like uh, about a 5 16 carbon, round carbon spar on each side of the fuselage on the inside. It runs pretty far back as far as I can see in here. And that's a good foot. And that, that, that big. If you nose this thing in, the chances are this will all stay intact. There's a hatchback here. Okay, they do have the uh, receiver in here, and it's a uh, Spectrum AR67, 637TA, now let's see if I can get that back in there, yeah, there we go, I have to see if I can show you this real quick here, right in here, there's a hatch that comes, it's magnetized. That gets, takes you to your receiver. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to put a forest in here for now. So, and they got those IC5s on here. 
And you know, that's great if you're going to do everything uh, with the smart te technology, but who's going to spend $200 for a 6S battery for this thing just to get the smart te technology? Uh, put a uh, put a volt sensor on there. That's all you got to do is on the uh, balance plug. Give you the same thing. Anyway, let's see what we got here. Obviously, I'm going to have to use some adapters here. And if you're really into the hobby, you'll get a box of adapters through time. Here we go. There we go. Oh. There we go. Okay, I got a 4,000. 4 cell. 30C. Now, I'm just going to stick that in there. Okay. Well, I'm kind of jumping the gun here. I should get the wings on first, I think. And maybe check on the manual. Okay. Well, let's first off put this back uh, elevator in. And this is a really cool setup. It's a snap-in. There's a little latch here. And uh, it's tongue and groove, so you gotta make sure. Listen. There, you heard it. And what it is, is in here, right here. Right here is a little, little latch that if you pull it down, you can pull it out. There, and it goes up. Now that by itself <laughs> isn't real sturdy, but they give you these struts that you can, they're snap-ons. There you go. And that adds a little bit more rigidity to it. And you got a ball, ball link connector here. And let's see here. Well, that went on really too easy. Uh, let's let's see about this now. Okay, this one's attached already. All right. Well, that's okay. That's it on the uh, on the tail assembly and the wheel assembly. That's it on the rear of the plane. Now, let's see. Are we still taping? Yes, we are. Are we still recording? Yes, we are. You can tell I'm back from the old school. Actually, I go back to beta tapes. <laughs> Anybody know what those are? Any comments? Oh. Uh, So, we got our wing strut, and let's see, Now, 
Where are my... Now these are the uh, locking keys, connector plugs or whatever you want to call them. I hope you can see that. And they go in here and you turn them counterclockwise until they lock. All right. Now, they didn't snap very tight for me, so I, I'm a little leery on those. And when you put these in, I'm just gonna, there's pins on here. And all of these are your connections, your ailerons, your flaps, your lights. Yeah, you want to make up, make sure those are all lined up so those plugs line up. Let's see here, maybe, maybe this will help. Ah, okay. quite a gap there but they turn well there's a notch that they you turn and you hear you feel it slip into its uh, groove or whatever it was whatever you want to call it okay now everything else is cosmetic uh, you've got your aileron counterweights which are actually weighted with bronze I believe and you got your antennas which foam tack and one of the things you get are these wing wing guards and they just snap in here like so let's see can you see that? But these are popping out pretty easy. So I'm going to widen them up a little bit. You want them wide enough that they're going to, this leading edge here is going to catch and lock it in there. There, well, I still go out a little bit yet. Let's see if we can snap that in there and keep it in there. There we go. There. Okay, okay. Yeah, this is a really pretty easy build. See now that wingtip won't touch. It's touching that uh, the guard. And now this one goes here. Make sure you put them in right too, because with spreading them, yeah. See that's locked in there. All right, how's that? Pretty good? Pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna take a break here because I have to set up my radio and uh, make sure I got everything uh, set up because there's a special light package in here that gets set up on here and uh, okay, I am really pleased with this. So let me get the Oh, before I do that though, I just want to mention these slats, which are a real cool thing. Uh, and they're made out of foam. Unfortunately, I was hoping they'd all be made out of plastic, but they are not, so. 
Now they say these, these just snap in, but they gotta be glued eventually. There. There. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Now I'll be all of the, everything that's got to be glued on here. I'll be using foam tack, and I'll show you that in just a second. There, pretty cool, huh? <clears throat> I've been using this now for several years. I hope you can see that foam tack. Now this is a uh, one ounce tube. It runs about ten bucks. Not cheap, but I'll tell you what, you don't waste any here. You buy a lot of this other stuff that's in the bottles and that uh, contact cement and, and and anything in a bottle is going to go bad on you in three four months. I've had some of this stuff last over a year. So. Okay. Okay, that's going to be it for now. I'm going to take a little break here, get caught up on everything, and I'll be back to you in just a bit. Okay, I'm back, and I have completed everything. Uh, I, awesome, awesome airplane. Give me a little sweep of this. Swing it around again. And show you the uh, rear wheel again. Okay. Now the antennas are attached, the foot pedals are attached, and I use foam tack for that, for these antennas, and for the slats are all attached. Uh, I got the regular foam wheels on. Now let's see here, I can bring this up a little bit yet. Yeah. Okay. So, get my DX9 all set up, and it's the Draco 2000 E Flight. Got a five minute timer set on it. Motor's armed. Motor off. Okay, I got the motor off. I still want to be really careful with this. Now I did find that I had a 6S here. And I was telling you about the uh, volt meters you can put on here. Okay. I got it set at 37. Okay. Well, that's what I would if I was flying. Uh, that's if you don't have the telemetry set up. So let's get this battery in here. Uh, I don't see any CG markers on here. I have not put them on yet, but I could. I use these little I use these little sewing pins. I hope you can see that. I clip them at about four or five millimeter, so a quarter inch or less, and then I make an impression with a pen. I super glue it in and then I put this pin in. I'm not going to do that now, it's going to take too much time. So we're just going to get this fired up. Now, uh, this prop is very dangerous. I have the power set off. Normally when you fire this up, you'd want this on the ground. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to take this out. 
Okay. So now you got it level as the, well to the ground. Okay, make sure your transmitter's on. Throttle down. Motors armed. Motor off. Motors off. There she goes. Okay, no throttle. I'm not going to mess with that yet. Let's just get this back on here. There you go. Looking good in the neighborhood. Oh, how's that? Right at you. Okay. And arm it. Motors armed. Some juice to her. Now, I do have reverse on here too. So if you're coming in, your brake is on. Okay, I've got the uh, lights on the top roller. Lights on. And then you got your landing lights. Landing mode B, lights on. Couldn't find the exact words I needed, so. Uh, and then you also got a rear light on here. A big bright light on the back here for if you're going to back up. So, how's that look? Okay, that's going to be a wrap on the assembly of this really just awesome uh, E-Flight Draco 2000 millimeter wingspan. And uh, outside of that prop, having tape wrapped around it, and uh, some of the painting irregularity on the uh, wheel skirts. I really, pretty awesome, really, really pretty awesome. Oh, I should show you the flaps in that. Oh. You see the flaps there? Landing flaps. Flapped up. Okay. I got them on a three second delay or three second process. Take off flaps. Landing flaps. And I've got some uh, in the elevator. I don't know if you can see it or not. If it's moving. Flapped up. Yeah, you can see it there. And, uh, okay, now I have three different rates. That's low rates, mid rates, high rates.
So, there you go. Uh, read the book. The book is very helpful as far as setting, setting everything up. Uh, with the rates and the uh, uh, flaps uh, settings and so forth. Um, I would recommend anybody that's not familiar with this plane is to go online and check out uh, Draco Mike Patey, I believe it is, uh, with his Draco machine. Now, <laughs> Also, the Flying Cowboys, uh, Trent Palmer, is an excellent view. Uh, if you haven't seen his channel, go to it. Uh, that's where I was introduced to the Draco, uh, is through the uh, Flying Cowboys, uh, Trent Palmer's uh, YouTube station. They do some really cool stuff, and uh, if you're into flying, and uh, with kits and so forth, that that's that's a must for you guys so uh and this is kind of like uh the cream of the crop of the stall planes uh, so uh unfortunately mike crashed it a, a a year or so ago it's no longer around he's working on a new one unfortunately he was he was not injured badly primarily due to these uh wing uh, guards he's got uh the wing didn't t uh, catch and, and flip them over just spun him around and uh, damaged his plane pretty bad and uh, bruised him up a little bit. Uh, so uh, it's a memory, but E Flight got together with him and made an exact duplicate of his 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 real uh, full scale Draco uh, with the wheel, uh, rear uh, steer wheel, and uh, the shocks and everything. Uh, can't find any fault in it. So with that said, I'm going to call it a day, a night. Uh, once again, my name is John. This here's Hangar 37. I want to thank you all for watching. I'll catch you on my next video.